We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. As a child, I had 100% unsupervised internet access, and what did I do with it? Some very scandalous things. I played internet safety games. Well, they're exactly what they sound like. Online interactive games, often with a story format that were designed to help kids learn how to use the internet responsibly. I was really a very rebellious child. And I didn't just play through them once, I played through them like 18 million times. But that's because they were legitimately really fun. Internet safety games happen to be one of those very specific memories that literally no one else has nostalgia for except for me. <coughs> Hello, I'm Skies. I'm your speaker at Only Gen Z Kids Remember This, a Gen Z nostalgia conference. Um, and the first thing I'd like to bring up is, do you guys remember Jax from the Carnegie Cyber Academy? No? Nobody? Well, she was the cyber boy, remember? You know, the one with the dark hair, and she ran a blog called Jumping Jacks, and she joined the academy and learned the error of her cyber bully ways? And you still remember her name, personality, and blog a decade later? That's not a relatable Gen Z experience. Stop throwing tomatoes! Jax, I did it for you. I did everything for you. But enough footage of my comedy edition for America's Got Talent. Let's talk about internet safety games. I was a sucker for this stuff. The characters and stories of these games were so powerful that I literally still randomly think of them sometimes. Like, the plotline of Allies and Aliens was immaculate. Allies and Aliens was a game that ran on Flash from Mediasmarts.ca, and the purpose of Allies and Aliens was to teach you how to identify propaganda and misinformation online, which did turn out to be pretty useful, actually. But it taught you how to identify propaganda from the perspective of an astronaut helping aliens decide which new planet to move to or live on, and you had to figure out when someone was misleading you about how good that planet actually was. There was even an evil government planet that sent out propaganda to the masses to try and lie about their dystopia. Oh yeah, it was awesome. If you were a voice actor for Allies and Aliens, please hit me up because the voice work in that was immaculate. When I think about Allies and Aliens, I don't just remember myself sitting in front of a desktop. In fact, the very same desktop that I'm filming this on, which is a desktop that is over 11 years old, Anyways, <laughs> I don't just remember myself sitting in front of a desktop, I feel like I'm actually there, in space, helping aliens decipher internet propaganda. I think I can testify to the effectiveness of these games when I say that I remember the names, plotlines, and characters from every single one of these games more than a decade later. So when researching for this video, duh, I wanted to go through a playthrough of these games, but, uh, but then I found out that they were all dead due to the death of Flash. Adobe, be on the lookout for my lawyers. You're gonna get slapped by legal. So you can't play any of these games anymore, except for NetSmart's kids, but they modernized, so they're not good anymore. I feel like such a boomer right now. <laughs> Internet safety games haven't been good since the 70s. Rock and roll is actually pretty alive and well. <sighs> Net smarts kids these days. Anyway, these games were fantastic. And better yet, you actually learned something from them. I am a huge nerd. <laughs> um, yeah, so as I grew up, I realized these games were probably designed to be used in schools as part of cyber safety curriculums. So I was just getting ahead of the curriculum, you know? I later grew up to be the kid that played iCivics for fun, and then the kid cried of embarrassment when they won cahoots every time because everyone always made fun of them for being a nerd for winning cahoots and playing educational games for fun on their own time. That's me. I have no friends. The end result of my internet safety game binges being that whenever we did actually have to take these cybersecurity lessons at school, I mastered them. I already knew everything because the NetSmarts 
robot mascot, the blue-haired guy from Allies and Aliens, and Danny from the Carnegie Cyber Academy had taught me everything I needed to know. Who needs school when you have MediaLiteracy.ca? <laughs> and the Carnegie Cyber Academy students had their own blogs, okay? The characters had their own blogs. If that is not peak education, I don't know what is. There was lore. Lots of lore. We need a fandom wiki, like, right now. Can someone get on that? The reason I bring this up today is because I credit these games, silly as they might seem, for my spotless mostly spotless reputation online and protecting my own identity online. I credit it for being the reason I never, say, called random phone numbers that I found online or, you know, gave out personal information to people that I didn't know. And being a vulnerable and kind of stupid child, it would have been pretty easy for me to fall into these situations considering my unsupervised internet access. But because of these games, I just didn't. And I think these games are really effective when it comes to teaching online responsibility, which is only growing more and more important, which is why it makes me really sad that the new generation of children will not be able to play these games, which is why I'm suing Adobe. This is a joke. This is also a joke. This is a joke. Adobe murdered these beautiful games. How will future generations learn to not be cyberbully? How will... How will they live when they've never experienced the joy of playing a game where you're fighting an internet flame war with a hose because the comments turn into actual flames? Genius. The kids these days, myself included, need some good way of learning netiquette, as these games call it, before they make some big mistakes. Because when you're living your life in childhood online, and as I said, kids tend to be pretty stupid, you have a big chance of making some stupid mistakes online that will haunt you for the rest of forever. Ooh, that's the scariest ghost story I know. Kids these days are no longer making their normal growing up mistakes with nobody watching. Kids these days, just like child stars, are making their mistakes and having their breakdowns in the public eye. We're turning everyone into a whole generation of celebrities whose move is watched and chronicled and left online permanently. And I think kids so need some like legitimate, strong moral guidance on how to use the internet responsibly. Like they just need it. The only reason that I didn't deactivate my Twitter after a aforementioned debacle is because I am followed by Ryan North. Ryan North! How could I lose that? So, you know, I'm keeping my Twitter up. Um, <laughs> just not using it. I have 940-ish followers on Twitter, which isn't a lot by internet standards, but it's a lot for normal person standards. I mean, think about it. Almost a thousand people, still sad I never got to a thousand, listening to every word that I say and potentially screenshotting it or chronicling it if I were to make a mistake. That is a lot of responsibility for a person to have. That is an audience. That is a platform. I'm just some normal random person who uses the internet. I never actively tried to grow a platform, and yet I still have one, which means I still have responsibility responsibility that I never asked for, but just by nature and virtue of being online, I have. When every single living soul has the potential to have a, a thousand person or more platform, things start to get real tangled <laughs> real fast. And it can be a really good thing. People whose voices would traditionally never be heard or listened to, like perhaps, for example, teenage girls, now have the chance to get people to listen to what they have to say which is amazing. But there are also some people spreading some really dangerous ideas online or targeting vulnerable people. And now those vulnerable people are more visible. And that's when things start to get really messy in the concept of everyone having a platform, but not everyone knows how to use that platform responsibly. And not every child knows how to protect themselves online. Some kids just give up their personal information. Some kids are just way too trusting and they don't know how to keep themselves safe. 
things can get really dangerous from there, which is why I think it's so important to teach online safety and responsibility from a very young age. Because there's no keeping the internet from kids. There's no hiding it anymore. It's such a part of our daily lives. So the only alternative from barring kids from the internet is either supervising them very closely, like dystopian level monitoring them, or making sure they know how to use it safely. Because kids do have the capacity to know how to use the internet safely. I know this from my own experience. You just have to be taught. I joked earlier about kids being stupid. Kids are not stupid. They're actually pretty smart. They just need someone to teach them how to be responsible online. And of course, some kids will not absorb that messaging as well as others. But I think when that messaging comes in the form of games, it's actually really super effective. It's led me to be very responsible online. Only once did I make a mistake. I gave my home address to flatstanley.com and my mom called the police. And that's about the extent of me giving out super personal information. I have been on the internet for a long time. I got a Facebook when I was five. Five years old is the age at which I got a Facebook. My mom was really annoyed that I kept playing the Facebook games on her account, and she was like, just get your own account and play games there, so I did. I didn't ever post anything, I just played games. I left when I was playing this virtual cat game, and someone said the F word to me in it. As a seven-year-old, I was highly disturbed. As the age I am now, I would just laugh, but I was scared off the internet for a couple weeks after that. Anyway, because I got a Facebook at five and I knew you weren't allowed to have one till 13, I thought it was illegal for kids to use the internet. Like, illegal, like someone would come knocking on my parents' door and arrest them if they found out I had a Facebook. So I never told anyone how old I was online. I would always lie. I would say I was 13. I know that's actually more illegal than using the Facebook as a child. Um, but don't prosecute me. I was a kid at the time. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. Um, anyway, I always used to pretend I was older than I actually was so that no one would come arrest my parents. <laughs> in hindsight, not telling anyone I was a vulnerable and easily manipulated child was probably a good idea. Although they could probably tell I was a kid when I hopped onto the Moshi Monsters role-playing forums. Any Gen Z kids remember those? And told everyone Catholic isn't Christian because I was a stupid kid and had no idea what Catholic even was. Why were we debating religion on the Moshi Monsters role-playing forums? What a world! <laughs> and I was like eight at the time, so you can imagine how messy everything got there. Okay, so I just watched this fantastic video by Charlotte Case, um, and it described her experience on Moshi Monsters. She said she learned the definition of atheism on the Motion Monsters role-playing forums. So I'm glad I'm not the only one who had that really weird experience. I have had one close call um, with someone attempting to manipulate me and solicit personal information out of me. But again, thanks to these games that I used to play, I knew enough to not give him anything that he could use. Um, and the main thing I learned from that experience was that guys, if you have parents that you can trust, Tell your parents if someone is sketchy to you or if someone is attempting to manipulate you. And if you don't have parents you can trust, please tell an adult that you can trust that someone online is trying to manipulate you. I kept it to myself because I was embarrassed and I felt like my parents would be mad at me. But when I did tell them, they were extremely supportive and helped me take the right steps to stay safe. Please, please do that if you ever find yourself in some kind of dangerous online situation. to because I thought it was my fault, but I do feel better. Of course it wasn't your fault. Sometimes people put bad pictures online for kids to see. People like, look at this Louie. It seems that Louie is up to his old tricks, spreading bad pictures and making kids feel sad and upset. He's turned the whole town gray. But if the kids tell like I did, the color would come back, right? Right. I have a crystal mouse mobile with the state-of-the-art 3D sound system. 
and I'll let you tell all of the kids in the Net Smarts neighborhood it's okay to tell a trusted adult. Buckle up, kids. It's gonna be a bumpy round. Point being, my generation and the ones that come after are growing up online. We all have those unique and interesting online experiences, and some of us have some pretty negative and terrible online experiences as well. So when you're interacting with people online and they're anonymous, consider the fact that they may or may not be six years old, you know, just for safety. But seriously, if you're online your whole life, you're bound to make some mistakes and those mistakes never go away. Kids famously do not understand how the world works and teenagers famously make risky, impulsive decisions. So that's a bit of a recipe for disaster when you consider that their mistakes are in the public eye and never go away. It's like how child stars go crazy. I'm scared that we're creating an entire generation of child stars that will eventually cave under the public pressure to perform. I love in the Tiffany Ferg video the importance of deleting old posts because it reminds me the importance because it reminds me how much I've changed since I started posting stuff online. I mean, I was literally five years old when I first developed an internet presence. Of course I've changed since then. I said anything reprehensible. Is that how you say it? Correct me in the comments. Reprehensible. So I never posted anything reprehensible, but as a child I was kind of morally pretentious and annoying. <laughs> Story time not clickbait. I grew up with beliefs that I no longer have about religion and how important evangelizing was. I no longer hold these beliefs about evangelizing, but as a kid I didn't know any better and I was just really stuck up there on my moral high horse and just very preachy and annoying because I'm not like that anymore. I get worried that people will possibly judge me based on my past self and not the way I am now, who has changed and evolved way past that mindset. People change. People change a lot. What someone said, did, or posted online maybe a year or two ago might not even reflect who they are today. Change is a part of a human condition. If we're not changing and growing, we're not living. It's hardwired into us. It's a part of our survival. If you watch someone grow up online over the course of 10 years, they're bound to be a drastically different person from the beginning to the end. And you know, the internet doesn't seem to like that idea. The internet doesn't seem to like the idea that people can change, even though it's a fundamental part of the human condition. I'm worried for the future of my generation, having grown up online and broadcasting our mistakes publicly to an unforgiving arena. The version of myself that I am broadcasting to you right now is imperfect, and it's not the final version. There will never be a final version of myself. There will never be a perfect version of myself. There will never be a ver there will never be a version of myself that does not make mistakes. And that's okay. Let's all have a little grace for each other, okay? The internet can be an unforgiving minefield. <laughs> and it'd be nice if we all did our part to clean it up a little bit. Remember that as individuals, people learn, grow, and change throughout the course of their entire lives. That's just what being human is all about. And I love the internet. I love the internet because it feels like an extension of all of humanity's best and worst qualities just all mashed into one crazy place that takes so much time, energy, and effort to even try to make sense out of. I love the internet. I have always loved the internet. I have grown up online. And I think we all owe it to the internet to pitch in and Make it showcase more of the best of humanity instead of the worst. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, consider subscribing. I am using YouTube as a creative outlet to express myself and nothing more. So, you know, just engage, have fun, and thanks for watching. Before you go, this is your reminder to respect women, respect pronouns, and of course, respect Bill Words because he is a princess.